is going on you guys my name is matt and welcome back to the crossroads where autistic meets artistic and that is what this show really is uh that's all i can really do to explain it i talk about pokemon cards for about 30 minutes i show you the coolest air pokemon cards that i've seen throughout the week and let's get right into this week's episode freaking started off strong kicking things off we have a first edition ivy pikachu now this got graded a beckett nine i think this is the highest grade that we have seen for an ivy pikachu uh and this one sold for a lot sixteen hundred and twenty five dollars pump to brakes matt before you get to that what is the error uh that first edition stamp should not be there this card sells for a lot as you just saw sixteen hundred twenty five dollars if you look next to me, you see I have error price per grade, so that is for the first edition stamp error, and uh, you can see grade 9 typically goes for around $893. Uh, this is from price charting, most of the time they are wrong, so that could be it, but also Beckett is more strict with their grading standards, and so I think a Beckett 9 could be seen almost as a 9.5 or maybe even a 10 for some of the other grading companies, so I think that's why this sold for as much as it did. But yes, this is a lot of freaking money for a Pokemon card. Average non-era price for a grade 9 is $33.78. And so kicking things off for the first card this week, we have an error value increase of 4,711%. And that's good enough for number 5 this week on our list of error value increases. If you are a new viewer, are you confused yet? Do you like this? I don't know. Let me know. Also, subscribe please. Thank you. Wink. Next up, we have the OG base set Charizard, and this is the black dot error. So this is a repeating error, and uh, at the bottom of the card there, you can see uh, there is a black dot covering uh, the uh, second N in Nintendo. And there's also a slight hollow shift, so the hollow foil is shifted up a little bit. Most of the time, you won't see a Charizard with a high error value increase. It's just, it's too popular of a card, and they're usually too valuable where the value you gain from an error it's a lot, but percentage-wise, it's not a crazy amount, so it never really e equals a high EVI. And so this Charizard in a grade 6 went for $480 this week. EVI of 68%, so again, it adds about $200 worth of value, which is a lot, but not a crazy high EVI. Let's move on to the next card. Next up, we have a base set War Turtle with the Evolution Box error. Now you see that artwork in the art box there? Shrink it down and put it in the evolution box, and that is the error. This is a repeating error, and I think this is honestly the coolest repeating error. Uh, that should be Squirtle up there, but they put War Turtle twice. Now this one got graded a grade 6, and let's take a look at the grading uh, pricing for this one. So price charting says this should go for $184, and I tend to agree with them on this one. Uh, I think this seller sold this card for too little. They even list it as best accepted offer price, which is what you're supposed to do, but you're supposed to list it for higher than you think it's supposed to go for. And then let someone put a slightly less offer in, and then you're happy, they're happy, everyone's happy. But in this one, I think only the buyer was happy. I don't know. This card sold for $110, so it's still a lot, but uh, I, I think the biggest indicator here is the error value increase is only 612%. Granted, the higher you go up on the grading scale, so grade 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, the lower EVI you're going to see just because it is that increased pricing. But 612% for a Evolution Box War Turtle is pretty darn low. Speaking of Evolution Box War Turtle, here is one that is raw, and uh, raw ones always have the highest EVI, and this one sold for $140. Now, I think the reason for that is if you look at the price jump. So essentially for this user to make their money back, I would say if they were to get this graded, uh, confidently, I think this could get a 7. And you can see pricing for a 7 is around $230, and then grade 8, we don't have that information. Grade 9, 400 Grade 10, I think, is around like $15 to $2,000, so there's a lot of money to be made here. Obviously, it's not going to get that high, but well, we can kind of get inside the mind of the buyer here, especially if they're willing to pay what I would think would be over market price for this. But again, it could be a good buy if you were getting it graded. So sold for $140. Average non-era price is $2.02. .02. That gives us a 6,831% error value increase. 
that's good enough for number three this week. Next up, we have a Charizard from Pokemon Evolutions, and this is a Hollow Bleed error. Uh, look at the photo above me. That really, really shows uh, how much Sparkle is going through this whole card. And this sold for a lot. This EVI is way higher than any vintage Hollow Bleed you will see. We see a lot of vintage Hollow Bleeds uh, sell. Not a lot, but a good amount. And they're never really this high. And I chose my words very carefully when I was talking about Charizard earlier about never really having a high EVI. I said most of the time. And this is the exception. So this Charizard uh, sold for $575. Average non-air Charizard for this one uh, goes for $43. So that gives us a 1,237% EVI. And that's good enough for number 9 this week. Charizard in the top 10. Who would have thought? I have not seen it before. We have, but it's very rare. Cue the music. If you are new here, this is the song that indicates that there is a fat bottom miscut. There's no music in my head, but I'm just imagining what Editor Matt is doing right now. We're going to keep it rolling the whole time I'm talking here. So here we have a Reverse Pharaoh from EX Sandstorm, and uh, this is a uh, fat bottom miscut. Now, uh, I've heard that E-Series uh, miscuts are pretty rare. You don't see them too often, and uh, a standard E-Series already has like a thicker bottom a little bit, so to have a fat bottom miscut on top of that, that's pretty cool. That's pretty special. Uh, this is an awesome card. I, I love all the artwork from this set. I love uh, the reverse hollows from this set. If you know me, I'm a, a vintage boy through and through, so I, I just love all of these cards, and it's awesome to see a fat bottom miscut like this. And this one sold at auction this week for $40.66. You will notice the fat bottom music hasn't stopped yet. That is because we have another fat bottom. Here we have a fat bottom polywag with a very severe miscut bottom. I believe there's a couple alignment dots. It's kind of hard to tell because honestly, this card is beat to hell. So that is unfortunate, but this card still sold for a decent amount for a standard Pokemon card. This sold for $18 this week. Condition, not good. EVI, not bad. So you can see usually average non-error price is $1.54. So EVI is 1,069%. And that's actually good enough for number 10 this week. All right, cut the music. Next up, we have an EV VMAX promo card. And this is sealed and it has an inverted and miscut back. Uh, inverted backs can be found in just about any set from base set all the way to the modern cards. So it's spanned uh, 25 years now, just about, if not more. Yeah, more. Holy crap. Uh, and they're always so cool to see. Uh, one thing that I would like to see from price charting is uh, for promo cards to see the sealed pricing. I know that's probably very difficult to track. Uh, they probably wouldn't have... I don't know how they would even do this, but... Uh, I think that would be valuable to see because uh, this one has a high EVI, but partly because it's sealed and partly because it's uh, uh, miscut and has an inverted back. It's mostly the inverted back and the miscut, but the sealed helps it a little bit. So we're not really comparing apples to apples, it's like apples to oranges, just about. Despite all that, yes, a sealed card that is an error is always very cool to see. Uh, this one sold for $65.18. Average down error price is around $2. And so that gives us a 3,192% air value increase. And that's good enough for number 7 this week. 3,000 for number 7 is kind of crazy. Let me tell you. Hey look, here we have another inverted miscut back. Uh, this is an energy card, a fire energy card. And uh, this one is pretty severely miscut. Now I found out recently, I, I was asking the question... Uh, a couple weeks ago, uh, why is this the most common orientation you'll see for inverted miscut back? And that is due to how the sheet is actually placed. So I think, uh, so if both the front and the back of the sheet are lined up perfectly, they'll look like the non-error card there. But if you flip them around, this is the area orientation that makes the most sense. And so that's why you see this most often because uh, whatever happened here, basically the um, the Pokemon sheet got just flipped around 180 degrees. And so this is what 
this is what you get from that. And yeah, I could not find pricing information for this, but uh, my standard rule is uh, the lowest price I'll give a card is uh, $1 because you have to factor in shipping and everything. And so uh, I assigned this bad boy a dollar and that's what we're going with. Uh, and so with that in mind, the error value increase is 4,150%. And that's good enough for number six this week. Next up, we have an Ivy Pikachu. So this is a promo card just like that first edition one, but the error for this one is it's an inverted stamp. So what I found out was uh, a little while ago, someone commented that uh, essentially this stamp is from a uh, Italian card dealer? Is it a card shop? There's uh, something, is it, uh, yeah, a collecting shop or something had this and they were able to get their own cards that had uh, their specific stamp on it. And some of those cards uh, had inverted stamp errors and that's what we see here. So uh, this is cool. This is kind of like probably a collector's edition, I would say for the non-error. Uh, you can see it goes for $45 on average. And so uh, uh, to see an inverted stamp of this is very neat. It's very cool. And uh, you can see this one sold for $168 in auction this week. Next up, we got a few mirror hollows for you folks out there. So here we have a Kabutops from Fossil Set. And this is the mirror hollow error where basically there are no stars uh, in that sparkly. There's no stars in that uh, hollow foil there. Now this one's interesting because this photo uh, of the error card actually makes it look like this is the non hollow version. And one other thing to note, uh, you'll see in the description here, it says uh, Fossil is actually the most common Wizards of the Coast set that has this error. And uh, we definitely find that to be true, and you will see that coming up too. So yeah, this one sold an auction for $78 this week and had a pretty respectable 570% error value increase. Card's in pretty good shape too, you can see the top of it above me. Next up, oh boy, we have a first edition Lapras from Fossil Set with that mirror hollow finish. And uh, I've said this before, I think uh, Lapras is probably the coolest one with the mirror hollow because uh, it makes a look at... It makes it look more like water that it's uh, floating on, that it's swimming in. And a grade 9, a PSA 9, that's pretty awesome. Uh, and you can see this one sold for $415 this week. Hey look, another first edition Lapras. Uh, this one also uh, looks like it is the non-hollow version, uh, especially from this angle. And this one sold for $185. And I can confidently say, if you get this graded, and it comes back a grade 9, it could go for at least $415. Maybe a little more, maybe a little less, but the facts say $415 is definitely in the realm of possibility. Next up, we have a Shaman V, and this is a freaking severe miscut. So we have uh, Off Center, which is a slightly shifted one way or the other. There's a miscut where you can see an alignment dot, and then there's a severe miscut where you have a little bit of another card actually showing on it. And then there's the freaking crazy, wow, that's a huge error miscut. And that's what this is. What would that be? One fifth of another card on here? That's uh, definitely a, a very severe lapse in quality for the printing process for this. It's cool to see the back too. You see a couple alignment dots on the top of the card there. Uh, hard to tell if those alignment dots are on the front of the card or not, but for sure two alignment dots. Now this one sold an auction this week for $94. Uh, average non-error price is $1.34. That gives us 6,915%. And that's good enough for number two this week on the list of EBI. Reminder to Matt, uh, check the percentage there. You might have to update the top 10. Next up, we have a vintage miscut, which is absolutely my favorite. I love it. Uh, here we have a Wigglytuff. This is a base set two card, a hollow card and is severely shifted to the right. So there's more of a border on the left there. And actually you see an alignment dot in the top left corner on the front and the bottom right corner on the back. Interesting. So that would, uh... no, would that suggest it's wonky at all? It looks a little wonky on the back actually. So that's why you would see it there. Interesting. And yeah, this one uh, was the best accepted offer price of $60 this week and a very, very respectable 789% EVI. 
Oh, that is so neat. With this next one, uh, this seller really did not want you to see any of the information. I don't think there's any merit to that, really. I don't think there's anything you can do with that information. You can see uh, they have uh, watermarks, and they're covering up both the QR code, or the scanning code, and also the serial number. Not sure why that is. If there is a legit reason for that, let me know in the comments, but I think it's a little bit overkill. Um, Regardless of that, here we have a Topson Charizard with the no number error. The error here is there is no 006 in that pink box next to Charizard's name. And boy, these Topson cards already sell for a lot. A grade 9 would be $1,341 for the non-error version. Well, this error version went for $6,730. So Top Sun were some of the first Pokemon cards ever printed, and it's thought that these Bluebacks were actually the first original print run even before that. So they're kind of thought as like the, the first edition or just like, yeah, one of the first ones printed. So that's why these are so rare and so valuable. Back to another segment of uh, deceiving and lying and tricking my viewers in order to watch this video. Just kidding. Am I? I don't know. So here we have a in crazy error from a user named Metal Grizzly Cannon on Reddit. So this user is Canadian and they bought four Japanese booster boxes from a retailer named Hobbiesville. And they opened two of the booster boxes. They had a couple good pulls, but nothing too crazy. And then the third box is where they came across this pack. They were about halfway through opening up the box and they realized that this pack was not like the other ones. So they reached for this pack, realized that something was not right, and they decided to take a photo of it. Uh, they said they did not have the insight to take a video of it, but I think these photos still do an awesome job. And they peeled it back a little bit, and they saw that it was a Charizard. So they decided to open up the pack, and wouldn't you know it, uh, I believe the largest chase card, I don't really know for sure, but this Charizard had a vertical crimp error, which if you do not know, is a lot more rare than a horizontal crimp. And to add to it, uh, this was actually a god pack too, meaning that it had a lot more of the chase cards in it. I don't know too much about god packs, but I do know that uh, to have a god pack mixed with an error like this is just like one in a million. It's crazy. So in the end, they ended up pulling two of these Charizards uh, from three or four booster boxes, and uh, they said the highest offer they've gotten so far is around 150 to 250 USD for the card, but for right now, they're gonna hold on to it. And one thing I've learned about error cards is that people are always very excited to talk about them. That's one reason why I've started to reach out to these sellers and see if they can give me a little bit more backstory. And most of them are wonderful and tell me awesome stories. I think people are excited to talk about the things that they experience here, and I think it's fun to share it all with you. So thank you for helping me create this thumbnail. And let's get on to the rest. What the heck? Next up, we have a nose pass. Uh, this is from, uh, I don't know what, 2023, whatever set that would be, that rhymed. And uh, this is a double printing error where it has one blank side too. So um, it's usually thought these double printing errors are thought as make ready cards. So essentially what that is, is uh, I don't know if they're just testing out the, the printing process or something. So what they would do is uh, they just want to make sure things are printing and they want to have something that's really cool, really valuable. And so they will print both sides of the card on one card and then have uh, the back side be blank. This never really happens uh, naturally. I, I don't believe any have been released naturally before, uh, especially with this square cut here. You won't see that end up in the pack. This is from Obsidian Flames, by the way. <laughs> My bad. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm like 99.9% .9 sure this doesn't happen naturally, but it's very, very cool to see and obviously uh, just about one of a kind. I'm not sure how many of these got out from the factory. I think in this case, uh, CGC should definitely put the the side with all the cool artwork and everything on the front. Uh, they've done that before. I don't know why they would have the blank side on the front. It's not really that interesting. That's not why you'd be buying this card. Despite all that, this card sold for $700 this week. It was the best accepted offer price. And uh, a typical nose pass, uh, grade nine, would go for $11.63. That gives us a 5,919% error value increase. And that's good enough for number four this week. Next up, we have a base set nine tails with an obstruction error. Uh, this got graded to CGC 8.5 and uh, do my eyes deceive me or is that a black flame error too? It's very hard to tell with the angle. I forget if there was multiple angles on this or not. 
I think there was just the front and the back side. Uh, maybe it wasn't. I don't know if CGC would catch that or not. But regardless, the obstruction is in the bottom right of the card on the front. Um, I think Ninetales is probably the best Pokemon to have a hair obstruction just because it is such a furry, such a fluffy animal. Pokemon, I mean. And yeah, it looks like whoever was working uh, at Wizards of the Coast that day, uh, when this was getting printed, they had a hair fall out. And that hair was forever sealed within a Pokemon with that obstruction. Didn't sell for a crazy amount. EVI is... Uh, 67%, so nothing crazy, but uh, definitely a cool error. Next up, we have an Ammonite from Fossil Set, and this is an additional ink error. Uh, and this one, you can see the back of the card is where that additional ink is, and there is a lot of it. Would that be magenta? Again, I I've said before, I would like to have the grading company say what additional ink it is. But yeah, I don't know how that happens, but there is a lot of additional ink here. You'll see some where it's just like a little streak here or there, so it's cool to see it cover the whole back side of the card. And... Uh, this helped it sell for a good a bit, a good a bit more. Average non-era price is $5.75. So for a grade seven, that's really not that impressive, but this one sold for $80 this week. And the error value increase is 1,291%. And that is good enough for number eight this week. Wait. Huh. Okay, there's uh, something wrong with the top 10. Um, Poliwag should be off of it. So uh, apparently there was two of these Shaman V cards actually sold and they're sold by different sellers. Uh, I thought I had just uh, done a duplicate uh, error on there, but apparently two of these sold. So uh, that would be the same uncut sheet. Uh, so these cards are from the same sheet and basically had the exact same miscut. That is incredible. Wow, so yeah, you know the miscut, you know what we'd call it. Uh, holy crap, that's incredible. This one sold in auction, sold for $96.97, and the error value increase is 7,137%. So we'll call that also number two. So it's tied for number two with the other one. I had no idea. Interesting. Boy, you learn something new every day, and I learn it here while I'm filming a YouTube video. Next up, we have a couple double hollow variants. Here we have a Shining Gyarados, got graded a PSA 8. And uh, this one sold for $900 this week. Holy crap, I think Shining Gyarados might be my favorite Pokemon card of all time. I am fortunate enough to have one. Uh, I pulled it as a kid. Very cool experience. Mine is not definitely in grade 8 condition. But yeah, in a double hollow error. Mine's also not a double hollow, unfortunately. For each of the double hollow variants, there's different ways to tell. And, and my advice for the Shining Gyarados is just, uh, it's darker and there's more hollow on it. That sounds uh, obvious, but that's just the best way to tell for it. Yes, this one sold for freaking $900. Wow. Next up, we have a PSA 8 Shining Magikarp double hollow variant. And this one sold for... $400 this week and best way to tell for Shining Magikarp is uh, all of the little Magikarps there will be swallowed up by that double hollow. So that's the best way to tell and this one sold for about half of what the Gyarados sold for. Still an awesome card though. Same grade too. And would you look at that? Here is the final card. Here we have a Luxio from Fusion Strike and this is a crazy, wonky, twisted, skewed crazy again, miscut. Uh, boy, something just, I don't know how that happens in the printing process and how it doesn't get caught. I know th they have to print out so many cards and a lot of it probably is automated where uh, human hands aren't really touching the process. But yeah, it's always crazy to see these and I can't even imagine the experience uh, of pulling one of these. I think that would be so cool. And to make this even cooler, this is already just a crazy aligned card, but you see that yellow border on the top right and also the back left corner, uh, that is the edge of sheet. So this is an edge of sheet miscut as well, which is even more rare and more valuable. You take all of that and you add it together, and that is why this standard Pokemon card sold for $160 this week. Average non-era price is $1.20. And so the error value increase is a staggering 13,233%. And obviously number one this week on their list of error value increases. I gotta tell you, 
Uh, this past week has been fun. Uh, seeing the video do well, I think uh, that working smarter I've been doing uh, by adding uh, kind of cool elements to the video, uh, typically from Reddit, has been working, and so I'm going to keep implementing that. I appreciate you guys watching. I'm having fun doing this. Have a great rest of your week. Goodbye. I'm tired as hell.